Good afternoon everyone, it's Tractor Man 44 here. This is a 1972 Ford 2000. This thing here, whenever I brought it home, it had been sitting for a number of years in a lean tube. It had sunk all the way into the gravel, all the way up to the rims. Uh, it hadn't run for a long time. I brought it home and fiddled around and, and got it cleaned up, got her, uh, got her started. And once I got it started uh, and kind of ironed out a little bit, I went ahead and bought plugs, plug wires, condenser, distributor cap, dust cap, and rotor. So I knew that I wasn't going to make any wild changes if I changed that stuff after I got it running and lined out. It runs fine. It Man, I tell you, you just bump start a button, it takes right off. Oh, and I also cleaned the carburetor back then. It's a hotly carburetor. By the time it got around to late fall, you know, temperature starts dropping and everything. And I'd used it off and on throughout the course of the summer. Never a problem. But I noticed whenever it got down below 40 degrees, I mean, you know, 36, 38 degrees, something like that. This thing wouldn't hit a lick. Ain't nothing you can do to get this thing to run. And I want to burn the starter up or kill my batteries and everything. So I said, go ahead and let it set. And you know, you always have that little warm-up spell. So I wait, let it warm up a little bit, you know, get up around 50 on one of those nice warm days, you know, early winter. Come out here, hit the button thing, fire up and run like crazy. I got figuring, I, I don't know what the heck's going on. So uh, I just can't get it to run unless it's, unless it's warm. What I decided to do, is convert this one to the Petronix uh, electronic ignition. They're going to have a 55,000 volt coil, and then of course all the guts in the distributor are going to be replaced. Uh, and it also got special wires and everything that goes with the Petronix. And hopefully it's going to fire up whenever the weather gets cold. And to get to the distributor, it's a whole lot easier to go ahead and pull the carburetor off anyway. So I really wanted to go through it and clean it again because it's been setting for a number of years now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clean the carburetor while I've got it off, but I needed it off to get the room in there to, to work on this distributor. Got a pretty good little rain going on. When I was trying before to get this thing running, I busted the uh, dust cap inside here. I tell you, these things are tight in here too, let me tell you. I got to pull the spark plug wires off. But it's kind of tough getting them spark plug wires off there because there's no clearance here. So I had to pull the wires off of the uh, distributor cap in order to get that out. Fire and order on this guy should be 132. It is a three-cylinder gas engine. If you drop a screw down in there, you can use a small telescoping rare earth magnet and retrieve them fairly easily. I prefer not dropping them. Put these two plates together. One is a spacer plate and one is a mounting plate for the uh, electronic ignition. So that should set in there. These two should align with those two right there. This here has a recessed hole. Well, I got the adapter plate in there and then the uh, the electronic mounting plate in there should be a good secure ground here's my 12 volt negative ground ignition module I think they want to call it an igniter so I'll route the wires around there and pull them right back out to grommets got the ignition module or the igniter mounted in there securely I'm gonna go ahead and route these right around the perimeter and slide these out just a little smudge of white lithium grease on this guy here Slide those right through the hole in the distributor. I don't want to pull too hard because those are little thin filaments inside there. I don't want to stretch them. There we go. Popped right in perfectly. Just a little bit of that lithium grease down here on the cam lobes. On the lobes of the uh, distributor cam. Even though we're not going to have anything opening and closing off of that like it did with the points, I want to be able to remove this guy if necessary in the future. This little guy here replaces all that. There's a magnet inside there. It's got the three-sided because of three-cylinder, three-sided uh, offsets that'll line up with the uh, lobes down there. There it is, fully down and intact. So that should be ready. There's a certain set of wires that's recommended to go with the Petronix. So I went ahead and bought a set of those. Now I'm going to save all this old stuff because it's even though it's old, it's it's brand new. It has very little runtime on it. I'm going to save that in case I do have some kind of an issue with this. I sincerely doubt it. Here's my dust shield. Should be pretty snug. I'm surprised this one here does not have an O-ring seal on it. I'm going to put a little bit of lithium on this also. Just a little bit. Some of the stuff you get nowadays is kind of known pretty well for not fitting just exactly the way it should. Found out something very interesting with this uh, pickup magnet installed. The replacement dust cap for this particular tractor will not go down over the top of it because of the diameter of the magnetic pickup. The height of this comes in contact with this before the actual flange comes in contact with the distributor itself. 
So it actually holds it up about a, about a quarter of an inch. So I took the old one and put the old one on there and it does exactly the same thing even though it's a different styled dust cover that actually seals with an O-ring, uh, it still does exactly the same thing. So the uh, distributor dust cover is not going to work, which is really kind of odd. However, one other thing I did notice, I can orient my number one port back in position and put it right here. And without the dust, dust cover, it still fits very securely. We've got the components all in. Everything is nice and secure. Uh, it's time to go ahead and put the rotor in. So there's our rotor. Line up number one where it needs to go, which will put the notch right here in line with the tab. And latch my mounting clips down. Nice and secure. Should be ready to go. Three spark plug wires of different length. The sharp one's going to be number one. The middle is going to be number two. And number three is the long one. Now these Fords have a real deeply uh, recessed spark plug in their head, uh, which is why they provide a boot that actually pops into the cover to keep nasty stuff from filling up around the uh, spark plug. Once we get that done, of course, we have to mount the new coil, the 55,000 volt coil that I ordered with the Petronix, and uh, we'll mount that, and of course, we put the new wire ends onto this and attach those, I'm pretty sure, right across the coil. This one here should go to the hot side, this could, should go to the other side of the coil, I think. Okay, that's only part of the fight. The real fight, there's no clearance between the top of the distributor and the bottom of the um, intake manifold. If you take a look right here, we're right up against the intake. But once you get it just right, just about the time you give up on this one, it'll slip right in. There's no reason they couldn't give you an additional half inch in here. They could have a divot back in here in the, in the intake manifold. There's any number of things they could do. So there's the three uh, plug wires. Then we're going to have to mount that 50,000 volt coil here somewhere and then wire this guy in and get on to the carburetor. There, that's the original Ford coil. Here's my new uh, Petronix supplied 55,000 volt coil, specifically used with electronic ignition. So this is going to end up going right across here, negative and positive, just like that. So here's our new 55,000 volt coil that comes with the, or you have to actually order separate, but it's the one they recommend with the Petronix ignition. I believe I'm going to stick it in with the negative post to the back side and the positive post out here to the front. Whenever you order Petron Petronix ignitions, you have to order them for a uh, positive ground or a negative ground system. When it comes to crimpers, these are about the best kind that you can get here. Thomas and Betts. Two different openings for the multiple gauges of wire. They have a ratchet. Once you get so far, you're committed and you can't go backwards. You've got to complete the crimp before it'll pop back open. It's a pretty high quality tool. And it gives a near factory crimp virtually every time. There's a whole bunch of instructions here. Conventional point system wiring diagram with a resistor or a resistor wire or ballast resistor. Uh, igniter system without a ballast resistor. The black wire must be connected to the negative side of the coil. The red wire must be connected to the positive side of the coil. So it's just like the ones in the past. Negative to the, the, the black to the negative and red to the positive side of the coil. And here's another one that is an igniter system with a ballast resistor. And all that they want to do if you happen to have a ballast resistor is you have to connect the red wire to the positive post or to the wire that goes to the positive post through the ballast resistor. So your incoming power comes off the ignition switch and goes straight to the red wire. And then at that junction the resistor or the ballast resistor goes on over to the positive side of the coil. So uh, we do not have that. We've got a standard 12 volt negative ground without ballast resistor, so we are correct. So all I have to do is undo these screws, put the black on the negative, red on the positive. Okay, took a little cussing and carried on, so I've got to pop the throttle linkage back on. And we've got to uh, install the vacuum tube for the vacuum advance. You got to get the breather tube on, but everything's connected up, fuel lines on. Slip my battery in, and we're going to give her a go. Terminals are tight. Gas is on. I put about three gallons of fresh gas in it. 
tractor's in neutral. It's got a fuel pump, so it's going to have to crank over a little bit in order to get the fuel pump to uh, pump the sediment bowl to pump the fuel circuit full of fuel. And what little bit is going to be in there at first is going to be that old stale fuel that's four years old. So uh, I'm not expecting great results. <laughs> I'm going to check to see if I got any fuel to the sediment bowl, but I'm not getting anything to my sediment bowl yet. Oh, I thought I had the gas on. I guess I did not. That's okay, we got some oil circulating anyway. Well, I got gas. I think I've got everything hooked up correctly. The main thing is maintaining polarity, correct polarity on that electronic ignition module. I double checked that. Definitely got gas getting there. Now that I've turned it over, I was able to make sure that the fuel pump filled up the sediment bowl. I think I'd actually um, pump a little too much in to the carburetor. But let's see what happens here. Well, guys, I tell you what, this obviously is on my iPhone. Whenever I told you that uh, I had everything ready to go, and uh, well, let's, let's see what happens, I literally hit the starter button just literally seconds after I, to I said that in the camera, and it didn't even make two revolutions and fired right off. And I turned around, looked at the camera, I was going to give it a thumbs up, and uh, the camera was in the process of saying goodbye. Uh, the battery went completely dead. So... I don't even know what I got on that part of the video yet because I haven't seen it. But uh, this thing, literally, it made less than two revolutions, and it fired right off. Just literally shocked the daylights out of me. Apparently, the electronic ignition is going to be uh, doing an okay job for me. I hope. Time will tell. As soon as it gets down around 35 degrees, I'm going to see if I can fire this cotton picker up. One thing I did notice, if you hear a little rattle in the front end, water pump. I think the water pump bearing is going out on this thing. Is letting the uh, shaft. I look real close. I think the shaft has got a little bit of a wiggle, and the fan blade is hitting the uh, hitting the shroud. That's the noise that we're hearing. So I'm going to have to order me a water pump, or you know what's going to happen? It's going to go right through the radiator more than likely. I'm reasonably uh, tickled. It's going to need a little fine tuning. The carburetor's going to need a little bit of adjusting here and there. It's going to have to get a little run time on it. But I think I better get a water pump on it before I do that. Sorry I had to finish up on the iPhone, but I'm just tickled to death. Totally shocked me. Had no idea it was going to fire off like that. Uh, but I tell you what, it sure did. And so, you know what, this Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here, guys.